Boys and girls, welcome to yet another action pack video. So what do we have today? Well, we have a mega chip, which is a uh, Agnes socket um, with the 2 megabyte uh, capable, let's say, Agnes chip. And what this does, it plugs into the Agnes socket of the Amiga and allows it to have, or gives it, 2 megabyte of chip RAM. Now why, you may ask, is this important? Well, the first and probably main reason, as you can see there's quite a bit going on, that lead there is a fly clip to the Gary chip. <clears throat> anyway, why would you need such a thing? Well, early Amigas up to the AGA chipset, generally speaking, all came with 512 or 1 megabyte of chip RAM. The later ECS machines um, had 2 megabyte chip RAM, or at least the capacity or capability of 2 megabyte chip RAM. For example, the A600 shipped with 1 megabyte, you could plug an expansion in and give it 2 megabyte chip RAM. The Amiga 2000 shipped with either 512 or 1 megabyte chip and that was it. Um, and I think that goes for all revisions. Uh, the Amiga 3000 shipped with 2 megabyte chip RAM and the Amiga 4000 chip shipped with 2 megabyte chip RAM as did the A1200. The CD32 also had 2 meg. The CD TV had 1 meg uh, which was non-upgradable without this. It was difficult to see on the uh, viewfinder. Um, yeah, so why why would you want such a thing? Well, as you know, or those of you that do know, when you use Workbench and you open various windows and have a look going on, the chip RAM disappears quite alarmingly. The more things you have open, the more things on the go, the more chip RAM is used, eventually you will receive a out of memory error, or a crash, or a reboot, or a guru meditation, or whatever it is. Now there's another good reason, and probably the main reason, WHD load. I would say 90%, if not 95 or above percent of software on WHD load will require 2 megabyte chip RAM. And that is simply, or if you don't know what WHD load is, um, it is a program that copies disk images into RAM, loads them, so it doesn't need floppy disks. Uh, it calls them slaves, so it loads them into RAM and away you go. Disk 1, disk 2, disk 3, disk 4, so on and so forth. Um, it makes the games load quicker. No no need to use old disks, corrupt floppy, draw, uh, floppy disks and so on and so forth. So if you only have a 1 megabyte Amiga, regardless of how much fast RAM you have, WHD load loads into chip and then it will offset the program's interface run. So if you've got one meg chip and one meg fast, you can run some WHD load, but not a lot. If you have one meg chip and say four meg fast run, you could use perhaps a few more. But generally speaking, the majority will be out of your reach. If on the other hand, you have two megabyte chip RAM and one or two megabyte fast RAM, you could run most Amiga software. If you have a little more fast RAM, then you could run everything. Now, WHD load usually likes to have a 68020. It can run on a 68010, it can run on a 68000. Um, so you can run it on any Amiga. I better check that, but I think you can run it on any Amiga. Well, we're about to see, because I'm going to pop this bad boy into my Amiga 2000 which has 1 meg chip and I think 4 meg fast 24 bit memory uh, and we will see if we can actually run something in WHD load so I may film it when it's in, I can't film myself doing it because I can't hold the camera well I possibly can, I might do, we will see stay tuned fag fans, let's have, a, let's have an experiment I shall see you shortly Oh, so we're back again. Um, 
the mega chip is installed. There it is. Pin one at the front. Pin one there on the motherboard. You can just say number one. I've had some trouble with the CPU. The socket is broken on this machine. Someone's had a a bit of fun hacking it about. So I've had to put a, um, a few uh, uh, single in-line pins to um, help support the CPU. I turned it on and it was black screen. But anyway, the mega chip's installed. The uh, fly lead is on pin 36 of Gary. And Gary is, uh, what is it, 5719. That's the gate array. Controls all the addresses for memory and all the rest of it. And there you can see we have two megabyte chip. Obviously the disk drive is not connected. It's uh, having a minute. I'm going to uh, connect a different disk drive to it, a fat one. It's an NEC drive. It was an external, so I need to jump it as an internal. That should be interesting. And then I'm going to pull this fan out and put a PC one in. I think if I've got one. Are they riveted? Yeah, it could be. Um, yeah. And um well we'll see how we get on. So that's it for the mega chip at the moment. We'll do some more work in a moment. While I'm inside the two thousand I thought I'd have a quick look inside the power pack. It all looks quite nice in there. Oh my god, look at it. Bloody filthy. But I'm going to change the fan that uh, howls like a banshee whilst trying not to electrocute myself. It's a 12 volt DC fan, PC fan, nothing special. Apart from the fact they've riveted it on, which is super. There's a fuse there in the corner. Some big capacitors to, ready to electrocute me. It's made, who's it made by? Oh, I don't know. Somebody made in Taiwan PSM 2000. It was or is a P oh, PSM 2000 120 volt or 240 volts. Commodore part number Fing Fing Ping Fing Ong Enterprise Limited. Okay, well, that seems straightforward. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is clean this bloody thing because I can't go in there, it's revolting. And um, we'll be back. Okay, we're back. This is the next stage. I've given it a quick clean. Um, I'll need to take it to work to blow it out properly, but can't be bothered. I've drilled out the rivets ish. The uh, ooh, the tin is still, the grill rather is still held on. A little tweak. There you go. And pop the rivets are tight, but I'll put a smaller drill in those and I'll drill those through. Probably you really reuse the grill. I have an F8 fan with screws ready. It's in the drawer, I've got a couple of them. So I'll drill those out with a M3, M4, M5 drill, whatever it is. Get rid of this fan. That sounds like a an aircraft taking off. 12 volt DC, 0 0.13 amps. Okay. Well, this is a um, 12 volt fan as well, so it's not a problem. Don't know where the wires go, they disappear in there somewhere, but we'll find them. Okay, back soon. Okay, so as you can see, the uh, fan is in. Drilled out the rivets, put the new fan in put the screws that came with it in which bite into the plastic they're self-tapping screws so it tightens up quite nice I've soldered two of the three wires the red and the black the red goes to what does it go to? orange on the Amiga and blue is earth for some reason uh, so I've soldered that on I've also, also bolted the power board back in I'll not stick my fingers in there since the power's on um, yeah, uh, the flop is on. It's on, on, on. Okay. Bang. Beep. 
What's it going to do? Well, it might boot from floppy. Yeah, it is. So that's okay. It's blowing the wrong way around for a start. That's the, so that's an error on my part. That's why I'll change that. Bloody thing. Why is it? Oh, yeah, it's PC, yeah. PC fan. Yep, 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 okay. Yeah, it's blowing into the case. Do I want it blowing into the case? No, I don't. I want it blowing out, don't I? The noise you can hear now is just the SCSI hard drive, which I shall be ejecting at some point. I need to spin, spin the fan over. But yeah, that's good. That's alright, it works. I might disconnect the SCSI drive and see, if it, uh, see how quiet the 2000 is. But I'll do that when I bolt it all back together. So I'm going to spin the fan over now. So it's the wrong way around. Yeah, it's got quite a nice bit of air movement there. I can feel it. I can feel it there. I can feel it there. Just. So yeah, it's pretty good. It's moving some air. I don't know what that is. What's that? That's me. Hello, me. Or well, me a long time ago. Nope. Nope. Ah, James Pond. Okay. Right, okay, so I'll spin the fan over. And uh, I'll sh I might video that. I'm feeling, you know, good like that. Can I turn that off while it's loading? Yeah. Okay, I'll be back. So we're back again. And the fan is in. It's the right way around. I've bolted the cover on it. And just fired it up. We have our 2 meg chip and 4 fast ram. Change the floppy over to a Kumana, Kumana external drive. It's now internal. I haven't done anything with the CD-ROM yet. I might put that to the PC side. In fact, I might do that in a minute. Um, I'm not that interested in having a CD-ROM on the Amiga, to be honest. Uh, no. Although, no. No, I, I've, I've got an external drive I could use on it as a SCSI if I wanted to have an Amiga drive. But anyway, that's all I wanted to do today. I've done most of the jobs I wanted to do on the 2000 at the moment. The next job would be change the hard drive for an SD solution. I've got the Amiga kit uh, SCSI to SD. It gives me a yellow screen when I plug it in at the moment. Well, I need to change cards. It might be a compatibility problem. I don't know. But yeah, that's about it. I need to power up the Windows side. I've left the hard drive disconnected. So it won't um, destroy Windows as I'm turning it on and off on the Amiga side. So that's it. I'll bolt it all back up and we'll have a little play with a few games and see what happens. And this is the 2000 all back together. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but it's much quieter than it was. Two megabyte chip RAM. Um, CD ROM is now found. There we go, D drive. UCS 2 meg Agnes so there we go that's a mildly reconditioned A2000 all done and dusted Now we'll just play some of the ultimate. Oh, I was going to do a WHD load, but well, I'll do that another day. Uh, 
obviously it's time for some serious outrun. Okay everybody, thank you very much and take care.